Manor Lords is back with its second big update, and Slavic Magic has been hard at work doing a lot of changes. Now, as far as I'm aware, a lot of the responses from this update have been very, very positive. People seem like Greg or Slavic Magic is going the right direction with the stuff that needs changing. You see, there was a lot of talk about whether there was enough room for just one person to still continue doing this on their own, but it seems like they're doing a decent job. But let's head straight into it. First of all, there's been quite a few things that have changed for trading and bug fixes. There used to be a bug that it would send two of the same resource to one burgage plot, and that's now been changed or at least fixed. Having two of one resource being sent to burgage plots meant that a lot of the burgage plots on the outside just wouldn't get the resources that they needed. You'd also run out of said resource before everybody got distributed evenly, which meant that upgrading to the next level was very annoying, and sometimes you wouldn't be able to get there when, well, normally you should have, just because the resource distribution was a little bit messed up. Marketplace distribution in general has been fixed, so everybody should hopefully be getting what they need. On top of this, though, there's now an extra little button. When you click on anything from your berry pickers to your carpenters, or at least firewood salesmen, whoever can be selling stuff on the market, there's also a button now to toggle that on and off. It prevents them from setting up market stores. This is actually great for micro, as sometimes you want your farmers or woodcutters or any job really to be committed to their work, but annoyingly they end up shilling tat on the marketplace instead and get distracted. I know I had a lot of burgers plots that had vegetable farms, and they were big vegetable farms, so I needed people to spend most of their time working on it. But then they'd go off and try and sell stuff on the market, which meant we'd have less family members for the farming, so on and so forth. So now you can do a bit more micromanagement, change that, and it will actually help your production and especially your efficiency. Although one thing Slavic Magic has said is that it is currently an experimental feature, so possibly not a permanent fixture, but I guess we'll have to find out to see how that pans out. It does also mean that more resources can be kept in storehouses and cranneries, so there's a more central point for everything, meaning that not everything has to go to said marketplaces. So let's move on to a little bit when it comes to harvesting and of course farming and all that sort of thing. A lot of work has been done around fields, harvesting and fertility. In fact, that's one of the main focuses of this update. Overlays and crop predictions should now be far more accurate and ox and worker behavior should be more optimized, meaning that people will get to cultivating or should I say plowing and sowing way faster and they'll be able to use the oxes way quicker because sometimes they'll be wandering off and not actually get the work done in time for winter. In fact, crop growth has been slowed down massively as well by quite a bit. It's just to try and make sense of the whole winter crops. When you're planting or sowing in Manor Lords, they will actually start growing or stay dormant throughout the winter and then when it comes back to spring, you'll get to do your harvesting, so on and so forth, and then go through the cycle again. Now, that didn't make too much sense since the crops would be pretty much ready grown, then winter would come along, and then they'd lay dormant, and then as soon as spring came, you could harvest them. But now, because of the slowing crop growth, it just makes it a little bit more realistic as well. Let's talk a little bit about the crops, though, and how they've actually been sorted. In terms of predicting how much fertility is going to be within this field, it's way more accurate. So you can get a better idea of the amount of resources or should I say yield that you're going to get from each farm, meaning that micromanagement and being more efficient with food is going to be a bit more possible. Sheep breeding has been something throughout the game that has been something of an enigma. It's started off as a massive hack being able to just make balls of yarn and sell them exponentially through the game because of course there was an upgrade that you can get which meant that sheeps would just spawn again and again and again and the amount of pictures i've seen or videos i've seen of people that have just these huge sheep farms because of this upgrade or should i say development point that you can put in meaning that sheep would just breed forever that's now been capped it's now one new lamb every 10 days max, which means that you're not going to be getting a huge array of sheep and they have balanced that down a little bit. One thing I would say about a lot of these balances is sometimes Slavic Magic does seem to be balancing things to make the game harder or should I say a little bit, I guess, less enjoyable in some ways because there are true some things that are bugs, some things that are almost hacks to make your game exponentially easier, especially when it comes to gaining money. But sometimes they are just stuff that would work and are realistic and do make sense within the game that have been nerfed just because they wanted to make the game harder. 
And I think trying to find that balance is a bit tricky. I think it's been calmed down a little bit now, but I think running around trying to put a cap on every single route of getting infinite money within this game isn't necessarily the best idea to go around it. Speaking of money, though, let's talk a little bit about trading. Barter and trading has gotten a lot of fixes. Foot traders used to, I think, just carry one item, but now they carry up to five per trip. Hiring horses will let traders carry up to 50 items to the trade points on the map. Going to make trading so much better. So and while some ways that they've managed to nerf some things, this is a nice little buff. But once again, this is a buff that actually makes sense, that actually works within this world. Packing stations have now been fixed, which is a godsend because they were such a cool idea and something that needed to be in the game. If anybody doesn't know, when you have more than one region, in order to send resources across, you need packing stations. Unfortunately, you do have to barter between them rather than just have the ability to send resources from one town to the other. But that's all been sorted now. You don't need regional wealth to send said items. And it does also, should I say it, the game calculates the amount of resources that should be sent depending on the value of that item. For example, planks, well, they're not as effective or should I say valued as honey. So you're going to get way more planks bartered for just a small amount of honey. And the game works all that out yourself to how much should be sent in accordance to the resource amount of that place. Let's talk a little bit, though, about the military. Now, in order to get the military to the maximum size possible before you had to hire up all your militia, making sure that you had full squads and then you could start getting mercenaries and retinue as well, because retinue you could get per manor. So it, there wasn't a cap on how many you could hire and, and mercenaries were pretty much the same, just depending on your wealth. But militia, there was only a set amount you could have meaning that you had to hire all them first, then do all your retinue and, of course, your mercenaries in order to max out your unit cards. Now, that's all been changed because, obviously, that just made no sense. You can hire six militia squads no matter the time of the game. So even if you have a plethora of mercenaries and a load of retinue, you can now still hire your six militia squads at any point in the game, meaning that you're going to be able to max out your unit cards even if you're late, late game and already have a load of heavily armed guys. Now, the plan is actually to make this cap of the amount of militia squads you can have relative to the Lord's rank within the game. Currently, there aren't actually any ranks as you as a Lord, just your town as you're going up through development points. But once that's been added in, of course, the better you are, the more renown you have and the more experience you have, the more people are going to want to fight underneath you and the more people you're going to be able to control because anybody can control a small militia. But when your armies start to grow, you need to be an experienced Lord and that's going to be how they tie it into said game one thing that has been added in though to do with some of the outside ai and trading and all that sort of stuff is the king's tax now that was in the last little update or should i say patch that came into the game and currently it's a little bit useless so you will have a tax every now and then that will grow and stack on top of each other you'll get charged it will come out your treasury and you can go into minuses it will tell you that you didn't afford to pay the tax but actually nothing happens at this point in time because there's no king the king's royal tax whilst being useless at this point in time has changed it's been toned down a little bit which is great because that started to make me a little bit annoyed and of course they toned down those trade route costs that were getting absolutely insane as well essentially it would grow exponentially with the wealth of your town or of course the resources that you were trading but sometimes these trade routes could cost six seven eight hundred regional wealth which was absolutely mental so i'm glad that's been changed now the king's tax is something that i think will be utilized in future updates just not quite yet. It'll be interesting to see how that comes in. But I'm assuming, and what we've kind of heard, is that if you don't pay your tax, the king starts to get angry, you lose favour with him, the other lords can gain favour, and of course, they can have more chance of claiming regions, and the king can give them regions, and eventually, well, the king's army can come in, which is going to be so much bigger than any of the other lords' armies that we've faced. And if you've not paid your taxes, he's not going to be very happy. For the first five years, now there is no royal tax, so you can be pretty lenient at that point in time. Then one treasury per citizen after five years, two treasuries per citizen after 10 years, and three treasury per citizen after 15 years. So it can get quite expensive. The more people that you have within your village, the more expensive it's going to be and the more tax you're going to have eventually paid. But let's talk a little bit about the more slow stuff. Artisans can now have positive reserves of items. When you're building up to a level 2 burgage plots, you can decide to change them into a dedicated artisan. Maybe it's a bow maker, maybe it's a joiner where they make shields and cogs. 
maybe it's a blacksmith where they make armor or weapons. Now, everybody within that family does said job, but they need resources in order to do it, whether it's iron, wood, leather, so on and so forth, and they all need planks in order to function, really. Now, you can set a reserve of items. For example, the joiner can have a reserve of at least 10 planks in there at all times, so they can always make enough shields. This is great. It kind of separates those resource pools, and look, these artisans will chug through your resources if you're not careful. But this is a way of separating a little bit and making sure that you always have what each artisan needs at this point in time. But there is quite a lot of extra stuff to get your teeth into with this patch. I've been playing it a little bit and actually one of the things that they did was slowing down the vegetable crops because they were way too powerful compared to farming. A little bit annoying for me um, because I have a video coming out within the next few days that was basically relying on those vegetable crops. <sighs> So I guess that video is useless. Go and check out the new update. It's on Manlords. If you guys don't know how to put it in, just go into your betas tab. You can put in the little code. There'll be a drop down and it will download it automatically. So make sure you go and sort that out if you want to go and test it out or just wait till it's fully released and in a stable condition. But let me know what you think. Do you think they're heading in the right direction when it comes to patching this game? I think so. I think fantastic work is being done. and I can't wait to see where we go next with it. But thank you so much for watching, guys. And until then, I will see you in the next one.